So I'm going to give a little um, background here uh, first. I guess that's some context for the day on uh, sort of why we're here, um, what brings us together. Uh, and um, I'll talk a little about Hadoop, which is, a, is an underpinning of a lot of the technology and, and things you're going to hear about. Um, so first up, some context. Uh, so we've seen this unprecedented thing in technology over the last uh, 30 or so years. Um, uh, if you look at this, this graph here of um, transistors in uh, Intel CPUs, um, it's, it's a nice, pretty upward and to the right graph, which is you know, what we like to see. Um, but it's, uh, the crazy thing about it is the scale. It's an exponential scale. Um, we've seen 10,000-fold you know, growth in, uh, in the number of transistors in a processor. And correspondingly, in you know, the size of hard drives, uh, the, the speeds of processors have gone up tremendously. Um, uh, all of these aspects of computation have, have been improving dramatically. Um, and we kind of, in the industry, have taken that for granted for a long time. Uh, and we shouldn't. It's, it's phenomenal. We don't see this anywhere else. You don't see this in transportation. We can travel a little faster than we used to, but not 10,000 times faster. It doesn't take, we can't get anywhere in the world in, in seconds. Uh, we, you don't see it in, uh, in architecture. You know, our houses are not 10,000 10, times bigger than they were 30 years ago. Uh, some people have a little bigger houses, but a lot of us don't. Um, so this change uh, has really not been well reflected in the software that we use to process data. Um, it's been reflected in, in, in some technologies. You know, the, we, we see a lot of this, this mobile technology. This is you know, a thousand times the technology you could carry in your pocket, I think, 30 years ago. Um, but uh, in data centers, I think we ha we've, we've seen some, some lag. Uh, I think the, the software systems, uh, the design didn't evolve apace. Um, and so we were presented with this opportunity um, to have a new approach. Uh, and that's the approach we've seen, we've seen arrive. Um, it's a new approach to using hardware. Um, can I get here? Uh, there we are. Um, uh, so instead of the more traditional approach of using exotic hardware, um, uh, having uh, some centralized, large centralized servers, uh, that are very expensive, special networking systems, special uh, storage systems. Um, uh, we said we use commodity hardware. Um, uh, we use racks and racks of uh, things that are much the same as the hardware that's in desktop PCs, the most widely produced hardware that's out there, because that's going to that's gonna give us the sort of price performance that we want. Uh, we use, again, commodity networking. Um, uh, we don't use a, a RAID. We use just a bunch of disks. Um, Instead of trying to build reliable hardware and build reliabil re reliability in at that level, we accept that the hardware is unreliable uh, and, uh, and try to um, build the reliability in at the software level. Um, and so consequently, we get systems which are much more cost effective. You can store and uh, process, in many cases, 10 times the amount of uh, data um, at 10 times the rates um, uh, you can for the same amount of investment. Um, and moreover, and more importantly in a lot of cases, these kinds of designs let you scale much further. Uh, you can simply analyze more data, which gives you more value. Uh, so on the software, we've seen a similar revolution in, in approach. Uh, rather than having monolithic services, uh, storage, and, uh, and database systems, we instead try to distribute everything, uh, is, is the, the new way of doing things, um, so that we have lots of these little nodes each of them themselves doing computation and storing data, uh, not fully independently. They need to coordinate, uh, and that's what the, the software helps, helps to do. Um, another big distinction uh, is the uh, strategy of storing data raw as it arrives. Um, in, a, in a database system, people spend a lot of time designing schemas up front, uh, so that they, and then they, they project all their data into these schemas as they store it, uh, and oftentimes, it's, over time, they'll want to change it, and it's very difficult. Um, and rather, if, if storage is cheap, you can save all the data as it exists originally, uh, and then project schemas onto it dynamically, uh, as you wish. You can save that if you like or not. Um, and it's a much more flexible approach, um, and allows you to reinterpret data in different contexts um, uh, and get more use out of it. Lastly, uh, I think the, the new software we're seeing tends to be open source, whereas the previous generation tended to be proprietary. And I, I think this is a, 
a big distinction I'm going to talk a little bit more about in a minute. First, I, I want to mention that we've got this ecosystem of projects. We've got Hadoop, which I think of as is very much like the kernel. Um, it, it handles um, uh, storage and resource allocation and scheduling, um, uh, authorization, authentication, these kinds of issues that are classically operating system issues. Uh, and it's becoming this kernel uh, of an of a industry standard system for distributed data processing. Um, but nobody uses the kernel alone, just like in Linux. Uh, you, I, I, you can't just install a Linux kernel. You install a suite of things around it. Uh, and we have yet to run into anybody who uses the Hadoop kernel alone. Everybody installs some other elements of the, of the ecosystem, Pig, Hive, HBase, uh, Flume, Uzi, Scoop. There's all these different projects, which you'll probably hear more about as, as you're here. Um, and almost all of these are projects at the Apache Software Foundation. Um, so I'm going to talk a little about Apache and why I think Apache provides a really strong foundation uh, for this ecosystem. Uh, Apache is a nonprofit organization, uh, hosts about uh, 100 uh, different projects. Uh, it's something of an unusual organization uh, in that it, it doesn't really have a, a strategic agenda. Um, Apache's organizational structure is, is, tries to promote healthy communities uh, of, of, and healthy interactions around software development um, not, and doesn't mandate any particular kind of software. You can bring any kind of software project to Apache. Uh, and at the top level, we don't care about the quality of the software even or whether anybody uses it. What we find, though, is that quality and use are emergent properties when you have a healthy community. If people are collaborating, they tend to uh, collaborating from diverse institutions in a transparent manner that tends to attract more people. It tends to attract projects that are actually useful uh, and that, are, that, are, that create high quality code. Um, some other things about Apache, it allows competing projects. So we've got both Pig and Hive, which have a lot of similar functionality. And Apache doesn't have to pick a winner. We can let the market pick, the, pick a winner or let them both uh, succeed and, and progress because they have slightly different uh, ad advantages in each case. Um, so it's also a, a loose federation of projects. We don't, we have, we're not building this tightly integrated system. We've got all these components, uh, and no one of them is necessarily critical. I mean, I, I described Hadoop as a kernel, um, but you could replace Hadoop. Uh, you could replace the file system, um, and the ecosystem would survive. Um, and I think that's a really um, uh, strong uh, argument for this ecosystem, uh, that, that nothing, nothing is, is sacred um, when you've uh, built things this way. Um, uh, lastly, it, it's a great uh, comfort to users um, to know that the software is available for free, that they can get involved in the projects if they uh, want to take it in a new direction, um, uh, because they, they know there's not some vendor out there who might start jacking up the prices um, or moving the project in a direction they don't like or discontinuing features that they do rely on. Uh, and I think people find this very comfortable, and it's led to a lot of the popularity uh, of this platform. Um, so I, I want to start to wrap up by talking about how people use uh, Hadoop. Uh, we've seen this pattern uh, many times. Uh, I think it's uh, roughly the pattern that Google, when they first developed, a lot of the underlying technologies followed. Um, it's certainly the, the pattern followed at Yahoo. And at Cloudera, we see it at customer after customer. They have some problem. Where they have so, that is intractable, that they, they just can't solve using other systems. They try and they fall over before they can get it, the data loaded or, or complete the, the computation they have in mind. So then they try Hadoop, they build a proof of concept, uh, and they find it works for them, hopefully. Uh, and they then start moving that into production, but in parallel, other people see this uh, within the organization, and they start adding more data sets and more uh, ideas in. And it ends up snowballing. And more and more of the company's data processing moves into Hadoop. Uh, we saw it. So at Yahoo, the initial example was search, web search. Um, and before the web search even got launched on top of Hadoop, uh, Yahoo was already doing lots of other things with Hadoop. Uh, and then now, they don't even do web search at Yahoo. Yet they're still growing their use of Hadoop. Um, uh, and, and using it in, in hundreds of places. They say every, every page view at, at Yahoo has uh, several Hadoop applications hiding behind it. Um, so finally, uh, I want to uh, uh, ask you all to, to ask yourselves uh, what this means to you. 
Um, uh, I think there's a real opportunity here. Uh, there, there's technology you can take advantage of. Uh, there's data that you've probably been ignoring because you haven't been able to uh, store it and process it. Um, there's data that your friends and neighbors may have that you might be able to use better uh, and combine with your data uh, to get, get a lot of insights. Uh, and I, I think um, uh, you'd be remiss if you didn't, didn't think a little about um, what applications you can build um, uh, to uh, take advantage of, of this, this ecosystem that's developed. Um, thank you.